this uh, Funny Car Chaos, how do, you, how do you like the feel of the Outlaw the Funny Car Racing? Well, I kind of still taking it all in. Uh, I'm not used to it. Never have been uh, to something like this before. Just used to the regular uh, drag races. But uh, I guess as long as the spectators like it, uh, it'll all be fine. You bet, and we got lots of folks here that are having, seem to having the, seemingly having a good time, and we appreciate them coming out for it. Hey, you were telling a story yesterday about uh, your short time in the uh, cockpit of a dragster, and uh, then you be went on to become a crew chief. So, uh, how did that go? You kind of, kind of was Don Prudhomme's lucky day, wasn't it? Oh uh, yeah, that's what I tell him too. Uh, lucky I wasn't worth a damn as a driver because uh, I think that. Uh, Hawaiian drags are kind of made both our uh, our careers. Right. Yeah, it certainly did, and uh, all of the drivers that have worked for you, you've had some drivers from uh, all o all across the country. Some from Oklahoma. I don't know if you had any from Missouri. And the list is long and distinguished of people that you've worked with. Uh, do you like the funny cars best, or do you prefer the dragsters? Well, uh, I think the funny cars I like better because I. Uh, was with them longer, but uh, this year, well, a couple years ago, ago, I was hired by this Jim Murphy to run a Nostalgia front engine dragster. So a guy asked me, he says, hey, when was the last time you ran a front engine dragster? And I said, well, I don't know, 50 years ago. And those front engine Nostalgia dragsters run a 392 style engine. So the guy said, well, when was the last time you ran a 392 engine? He said, oh, I don't know, maybe 50 plus years ago. I said, but I got a theory. He said, what's that? I said, well, I try not to tell the car what to do. I think it'll try to tell, it'll tell me what to do. I just got to figure out what it's trying to tell me. That's uh, sage advice right there. And then you put another uh, world championship in your pocket well, last year with the results with uh, Murphy Crew. How, uh, how was that to, uh, to come back and win another title with them? Oh, it was great. Uh, it was hard for it right down to the end there uh, with that Mindy Fry car. Uh, but it was great, exciting, and uh, I love the challenge, and uh, thankfully it came out to our benefit. Well, we're just tickled pink that you were available to be here. Uh, what's, what else is on your, uh, your agenda for, for uh, ra racer, uh, racing into the future? Well, actually, I don't really know. Uh, like I tell, told somebody, uh, that Jim Murphy decided to kind of do it on their own this year, which is fine. And uh, so a guy asked me, what, am, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I don't know. I never looked for a job before, so I'm just hanging out. All right. And work has always found you. They always come calling because they know that you've got the cred and uh, the experience to, to make it happen. So if you've got a call from somebody on the big show or somebody else in the nostalgia world, are you interested in doing that? Or are you kind of enjoying a little bit of kickback time? Well, the big show, I don't know, because uh, uh, the, the traveling, you know, 23 races a year and all that, I don't know if I'm into that anymore. Uh, nostalgia, I'd probably be interested, uh, as long as the, the person or the team has the funds to, to give me the parts to win. If they don't, well, I don't know if I want to do it. So it's... Uh you're looking for the opportunity to be able to show up and use your expertise and, uh, and put somebody in the winner's circle, not just looking for a day at the drags. Right. I guess I've always been a very competitive person, and uh, I still am. Uh, like Perdon told me, he said, why do you want to keep doing this, uh, beating yourself up? He said, one of these days I'm going to hear that you died and had a heart attack on a starting line. And I told him, I said, well, if that happens, at least you could tell him I was doing something I like to do. That's right. If that happens, he died happy doing what he's been doing for years and really, really enjoyed it. Tell me, how did you, you're, you came from the Hawaiian Islands. I don't, most of us think about uh, surfboards and, and uh, laying on the beach in Hawaii. How did you get started in uh, top fuel drag racing? Well, I tell people, yeah, I was born and raised in Hawaii. And I tell people that uh, either you surf or you race. And I guess you know what I did. Anyway, uh... I came over here and worked for a company called Dragmaster Company that built dragsters way back in the 60s, uh, and they kind of went from there. There's been a quite, a, quite a few racers that have come from, uh, from the Hawaiian Islands, and uh, you're probably, arguably, one of the most, most successful of them. Um, 
who were some of the other people that you came up with as you were getting started in racing? Well, I bought this uh, <coughs> one guy uh, called Danny Angaius. He went on, he drove the Mickey Thompson funny cars, did very well, and went out to uh, run Indy cars. And then uh, this Todd Okuhara now that runs the Leah Pruitt car, uh, him and his brother, I brought them both over from Hawaii. Uh, when I was running uh, uh, Perdon's car with Ron Capps, and uh, they, they, were, they stayed with Perdon, and then Schumacher hired them, and now they're over there, uh, and he's running the crew, Todd is the crew chief for Leah Pruitt's car. Yeah, and they are, uh, they are doing well. They started off uh, doing extremely well last year, and of course it's all cyclical. Sometimes it works, and sometimes you've got to constantly be changing. Is that one of the things that sometimes from the outside looking in, people look, think about, well, why do you always have to change things? And, and uh, for the layperson, you know, how do you, how do you answer that question? Why, why do things always change? Well, everybody's looking to uh, uh, be one step ahead. And uh, when that happens, uh, it's like I, the way I put it is that when your car's running good you're, and you're beating everybody, you're not apt to touch it. Well, all the rest of the guys, they're trying to catch you. And uh, because you didn't touch yours, eventually one of them is going to find something that you haven't done or haven't had and be that one step ahead. So you, in response, you have to try something. And anytime you try something and get out of your element, you're going, to, you're going to suffer a little bit. You know, that's just the way it is. Always always a learning curve. Sometimes that uh, brilliant idea is exactly what you need, but there might be a hiccup or two along the way before, before it, uh, it winds up working. Um, man, we, th we uh, really enjoyed having you here at, uh, at Mocan Dragway. Anything else you'd like to add for the fans? Well, just hope everybody enjoys themselves. Uh, I think you're going to see a hell of a show tonight. All right, you got anything up, uh, any tricks up your sleeve for the uh, Mopar Crazy Funny Car? Well, I hope so. <laughs> Getting down the track, that'd be a big trick. All right, well, listen, everybody, let's hear it for Roland Leon. We thank you so much for being here this weekend, and uh, we very much enjoyed spending the time with you. Thank you. Thank you.